All right. The amazing thing is we can not only use eigenvalues, eigenvectors to find powers of matrices, but also use them to find e to a matrix. Whoa. And you might say, Payam, you kind of went crazy. I kind of did, but I promise you this is actually useful for solving differential equations, which will be the point of the next video. But here, let's try to calculate e to the at, where a was a matrix, minus 2, 2, minus 6, 5. And in order to do this, we need to use the decomposition of the previous video, because so far, we found that a is PDP inverse, where D was the matrix of eigenvalues, 1, 0, 0, 2, and P is the matrix of corresponding eigenvectors. So I think it was 2, 3, 1, 2. All right. And remember, that was useful because it enabled us to find powers of matrices. So useful for calculating. A to the N. Now try to think of the connection between the two. We know how to find powers of matrices. And now we want to find E to a matrix. It would be amazing if we somehow wrote E to the X in terms of powers. E to the X, powers. Wait a moment. We can actually do that. It's the thing that you all hate. It's called the power series. So again, the point is, since we know how to calculate matrix powers, it makes sense to use power series here. So trick, use power series. In fact, we call. Well, e to the x can be written as a power series. 1 plus x plus x squared plus 2 factorial, etc., which is really the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And that precisely allows us to calculate, or at least to define, e to the at. So e to the at, well, we want to write everything in terms of matrices. The analog of one in the matrix world is the identity matrix. And then at plus at squared over 2 factorial, which is really the sum from 0 to infinity of at to the n over n factorial. That said, the good news is we will not really use this direct definition here. Instead, we want to use the A is PDP inverse definition. So the first fact that we need is that if A is PDP inverse, P inverse, then it turns out E to the AT Again, you just do it to the diagonal matrix, P, E to the DT, P inverse. And I will prove this fact in a separate video, just so it's not too heavy. And moreover, so we found D, that's our second fact, if D is our matrix, one zero zero two, then it's actually easy to calculate e to the dt dt. It turns out you just need to exponentiate the diagonal terms. So this becomes e to the t 
zero, zero, e to the 2t. And this I also prove in a separate way. Yeah. And therefore, we can calculate e to the dt, or so in other words, e to the at. So hence, e to the at by fact one becomes p e to the dt p inverse p inverse and by fact two so p is just two one three two and we get e to the t zero zero e to the two t and then two one three two inverse and we calculated that inverse in a previous video. So this gives you 2, 1, 3, 2. e to the t, 0, 0, e to the 2, t. I think 2 minus 1, minus 3, 2. And then you just calculate everything out. So 2, 1, 3, 2. Then you multiply the first row by e to the t. So 2 e to the t minus e to the t, minus 3e to the 2t, 2e to the 2t. And then you just do the matrix multiplication again. So it becomes 4e to the t, and then minus 3e to the 2t, and then minus 2e to the t, plus 4, I think, uh, no, plus well, minus 2e to the t plus 2e to the 2t. And then 6e to the t minus 6e to the 2t. And then minus 3e to the t plus 4e to the 2t. And I will show you why this is useful for calc for solving systems of ODEs. But I do want to tell you there is nothing special about exponential functions. We can actually use this for any function which has power series. We can also calculate cosine of AT and sine of AT using the same. The same way. And also two to the A or uh, you know, a logarithm of AT also using the same way. And there's some fun YouTube videos attached to this.